Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't know why all of a sudden my video is weird. I don't have any lights on. Hold on a second. Let me... There, maybe that'll help a little bit. Oh, of course, now she's calling me when I go live. Oh my gosh. Um, hold on, I'm gonna actually... Hey, Kenzie, I just went live on YouTube, so if I can call you right back. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that was a partner. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to come in and just kind of discuss a couple things. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. It's Monday, and uh, it's been a while. Uh, I've been I've been really busy. No, I'm not in my underwear today. <laughs> um, I, I just I didn't even I don't even have anything very specific. I didn't primp or prep or anything for this. I just you know I'm watching all of these different videos on economics. And watching all this different these different interviews with political figures, and I'm I've been reading different articles, and I think today I, I really just kind of came on to just rant a little, not even rant, but just kind of discuss things in a very, um, a very clear and simple manner, and and by that I mean no no fuss no muss, <laughs> um, so. First of all, I see Mark and Cypher. Uh, I will let everybody know that um, yesterday, uh, Crypto Face just decided he wanted to send me some Bitcoin. So, uh, and he did. He sent me like half a Bitcoin. And I, at first I said, look, no, I, I haven't talked about Mark and Cypher at all because I expected to be paid. He's like, no, no, I totally understand. But, you know, I guess it's been helping them sell um, some Mark and Cypher. So he, he wanted to flip me some coins so i let him so thanks um and um you know i i you know i had a little tiff with um his business partner uh i i think they you know i i took a i took some friendly shots i i thought uh, at crypto face um nothing nothing big but just basically uh trying to humble him a little bit because i think the guy's wicked smart and he knows his shit but I just wanted to humble him a little bit. I think his business partner kind of took some of it the wrong way. And apparently he's been a big fan of mine for a long time. So I think he was a little bit more frustrated than he may have been if it was just some random anybody on YouTube for whatever reason. And I respect that and I appreciate that. Um, and, um, you know, look, nothing takes away from the fact that if you can afford it, Market Cypher is really good. I still like it. Uh, but, you know, the video that I did recently about uh, a, a potential free alternative, um, you know, some people took that as me trying to call out Market Cipher like some kind of scam. I don't think it's a scam. I think Market Cipher does a lot of cool shit. And if you can afford it, I think it's worthwhile. Um, but, you know, some people took it differently. And it's for whatever reason, once I did that video, I started getting a lot of it, uh, links, people emailing me links uh, to all kinds of stuff. And I haven't even watched any of them, to be honest with you. I appreciate it all. But um, look, I, I like Market Cipher. Uh, you know, I thought originally I thought it was 0.3 Bitcoin. I was corrected. I made the correction. It's only 0.1 Bitcoin. It's still pricey. Like if Bitcoin hits a million dollars, you paid a shit ton of money for the indicator. But if the indicator helps you generate a lot more um, than you spent on it, then it's pretty much worth it. It's just a matter of different people have different ways of doing things when it comes to technical analysis. And that's it. I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I like crypto face guys. I know some of you guys really don't like him at all. Um, I do like him. I think he's a cocky kid. 
But what what dude his and I'm guessing he's in his like early to mid twenties. That's my guess. I don't even know. Um, but you know, hell, when I was that age, if I was doing the shit he's doing at that age, I'd be cocky son of a bitch too. I mean, let's just face it. Um, and some people don't like that, but just watching him and understanding his thought patterns and the way he looks at trading is very interesting to me. Um, and you know, it's like, look, I've given him plenty of opportunities to go completely ape shit on me about things I've said, and he's taken, taken it all pretty much in stride. And I respect that, which to me, that shows some maturity. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but I just wanted to make sure I disclosed that. And I just kind of let everybody know what was going on with that front. Um, but anyway, look guys, you know, I see a lot of, um, a lot of you guys are out there on YouTube and, and I see your comments and I'll watch other YouTubers videos and I see the comments that are being posted. And I, I think, you know, there's a lot, there are a lot of people out there that are concerned, like, is the altcoin rally ever going to happen or altcoins dead? And then you hear all these Bitcoin maximalists talking about how Bitcoin is the end all be all that everything else is going to zero. And when I hear stuff like that, I really kind of get infuriated inside because I think how short sighted is someone who truly believes and do they truly believe this to be the case or are they just, I don't even know where to begin in this conversation. Um, it's the same as, you know, political, um, those in politics. A lot of these people run around social media branding each other and labeling each other. And it's this divide and conquer mentality. And I think it's inspired by people that are kind of pulling the strings in, you know, certain circumstances, um, you know, whether it be social media groups, um, you know, news media, so forth and so on. And I think people are... <sighs> God, Americans are just stupid. Like, I don't know what else to say. I hate it to say it, but where are all the leaders? Where are all the true leaders in our society who are leading people um, to think for themselves? I, to me, a true leader educates the public and educates people and lets them decide for themselves what their what the outcome is going to be, what their beliefs are. Leaders don't necessarily enforce or push upon people a belief system. And, you know, when I look at some of these guys on YouTube, it's like, look, I have my beliefs. I have my favorite projects. I have projects that I've been holding bags for for quite some time. And I'm completely content in that. If 10 of the projects I invested in were to go to zero and... Everything else does what I expect it to. I'm still a huge winner. I, I'm not worried about, oh, well, this little project is is shit or this little. I mean, I'm worried about it to a certain extent. But realistically speaking, in the grand scheme of things, we are still in the infancy of the cryptocurrency market. Plain and simple. And each and every one of you that are watching this channel, each and every one of you that are out there reading and continuing to educate yourself are the pioneers of this industry. Just because somebody else created Bitcoin 10 years ago, just because a lot of these Bitcoin maximalists came to this space, you know, three years ago, four or five years ago, it doesn't make them, I mean, well, they are, they're pioneers as well, don't get me wrong, but this is still like, you know, in the movie Far and Away, I wish I had that loaded up. Um, you know, in the movie Far and Away, where they're all taken off on their horses to pl plant their stakes into the ground to claim their land, that's that's where we still are today. That's exactly what's going on right now. Now the in, in the um, the the institutions are now starting to plant their stakes in the land, and and it's like everybody's been doing that. The difference being right now and during these bear market cycles is that every one of you that have run out and claimed your stake. You know, you planted your stake in, in your own plot of land, be it your own altcoin positions that you believe in these projects, you then turn around and you give them up to everybody else. Because you go out and you see what some of these Bitcoin maximalists are saying, 
And you think, oh my gosh, I better dump all my altcoins into Bitcoin because Bitcoin's going to go up. Yes, Bitcoin is going to go up. And I'll tell you right now, when some of these altcoin projects decide they're going to go up, a lot of you guys are going to be screwed. I'm telling you, a lot of you guys are going to be screwed. And the mentality is, it's these guys are trying to put, they're trying to use their clout and their power and their media reach to try and push everybody to dump their altcoins into Bitcoin. Well, what does that do for them? Well, if they got into Bitcoin early on or they bought into Bitcoin cheap and they can convince everybody else out there that the altcoin market is crap and then they dump their altcoins into Bitcoin, well, what they get is a short-term pump in Bitcoin's price that they can then sell because a lot of these Bitcoin maximalists are trading their Bitcoin. They're trading, they're using TA, and they're using whatever tricks they can, just like the big whales are doing in a lot of these leveraged outfits like BitMEX and so forth. They're, they're basically... They're playing this game that ultimately causes the retail investor to lose. And it bothers me. It bothers me to a strong degree because so many people are looking to be led and they're following people that only have their true own interests in mind. You know, when a Bitcoin maximalist is running around talking about shitcoin, shitcoin, but then you find out, oh, well, he invested in the back end of a particular ICO project. Wouldn't that be considered a shitcoin if it's not Bitcoin? So you've got people talking out of two sides of their mouth. Well, what reason? What 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 do you believe? You know, and that tells me. Well, this person's only saying what they feel is going to help benefit them in the moment. And uh, fuck everybody that's paying attention or listening. There's no loyalty to the viewers. There's no loyalty to the people that are paying attention, trying to learn wholeheartedly, trying to figure out how to change their lives. Now, is, 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 is Bitcoin going to do exceedingly well? Is it a, a, a mistake to dump your alts into Bitcoin? Not necessarily. It depends on how you look at it. You know, if you dump your altcoins into Bitcoin and Bitcoin were to go up to 20 grand before the altcoins rally begins, well, then maybe that was a pretty decent trade. The problem is, is that the volume in, the, in a lot of the altcoin market is so low that you're going to struggle. So you're going to be sitting on exchanges with long-term positions, sitting in market orders that aren't getting filled because the volume is so low. Now, you know, if you're able to pull that off and then and you're able to get back into your altcoin position without jacking the price up on yourself, it's going to depend on the swing. The other side to this that people don't really consider is when you dump your altcoins into Bitcoin, Bitcoin then rises, you've got taxable events up to like 35 or 39 percent based off of how long you're holding these positions so what you're doing by dumping your alts into the bitcoins the bitcoins you're you're ultimately creating a taxable event so now you have to basically make well and it depends on when you traded when you bought and all these different factors but then when you go back into Bitcoin and let's say you 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 dumped your alts into Bitcoin at 10,000, Bitcoin rises to 20,000 and then the overflow starts going in, into speculative investing into the altcoin market. Now you've got not one but two taxable events costing you up to 39% in capital gains tax to get back into the altcoin market. And then any rise you get from there on is going to continue costing you in capital gains because you haven't held that position for year so your cap your capital gains taxes are going to go down to 15 percent there's no way because you're trading and you're trying to do all this stuff maybe you come out ahead maybe you don't and maybe that risk screws you significantly in the long run depending on what happens in the market i'm not a licensed uh financial advisor i'm not telling any of you what to do with your money i am also not a tax accountant or anything like that so talk to your tax account, talk to your CPA that knows crypto, talk to the people, you know, talk to your whoever, your financial advisor, talk to these people, find out what they have to say. Don't just listen to me. But what really bothers me is when I look at Bitcoin and I, I literally for the past week, you know, I'm getting closer to launching my exchange and I'm thinking to myself, you know, my mission, as soon as we launch Crow's Nest X Live, is going to be specifically to educate as many people as possible about the crypto market. 
And <sighs> so many assholes. Um, hold on a minute. Uh, let's see here. There, assholes be gone. Um, so here's the thing, and I, I've been thinking a lot about where I see Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrencies in general ending up, um, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now. Like what we've had in this altcoin, in the altcoin rally in 2017, what we've had is a, we had a speculative rally because of strong promises of return on investment in an unregulated space, okay? And we saw so many different industries being potentially disrupted by blockchain technology. And to me, it's only a drop in the bucket. I actually, I don't have it down here. I have it upstairs. I was actually boiling down how would an automated mortgage company work utilizing blockchain technology? And, and, I, and, I, and maybe someday I'll do a full video on it. But I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to think, what are some of the most, you know, maybe even just within the United States, if let's say a mortgage company wanted to utilize blockchain technology to completely automate the mortgage business, how would that be possible? Could you use Bitcoin to do that? Of course not. Could you use Ethereum to do that? Maybe, but probably not. Could you use Cardano or GoChain or some of these others that are much quicker but still do a lot of the same things, adding, adding a lot of benefit? Uh, yeah, you probably could. And not only that, but when I think about how that would take place, well, that would take place through smart contracts, potentially interoperability, something would have to need to be quick and scalable, um, and you'd have to utilize some form of artificial intelligence. And then you'd have to store this data somewhere and then have a decentralized, you know, at least a national system, a peer-to-peer -peer system for processing an abundance of data. Not just the mortgage data or you know the um, the the data uploads, but you know you're you're talking about the security side of things. You're talking about the uh, the origination side of things, the calculations, the um, you know there are systems in the mortgage business that you know you can get kind of a, an automated um, approval or disapproval to somebody's mortgage loan status, right? And when I look at it, I'm thinking, okay, so if, if this were, if there were a system implemented to, to accomplish this, how much, it looks like we have a lot of Maddox spammers in chat. I don't know what's going on. I, I see it, guys. It's, I, I'm going to start having a white people. Um, so the, I guess the entire point I'm making to this is when, when you're talking about use case, Right. So when Bitcoin starts to hit, um, when Bitcoin starts to hit, you know, closer to 20 grand, that's about when I expect to see the altcoin market start to really start really rally. That's that's my guess. And in that, we're going to see volatility really start to crank up. OK, we're going to see the price of Bitcoin rising along with the altcoin markets, because that is when people are going to start actively trading the altcoin market. People currently right now do not want to trade the altcoin market when Bitcoin is potentially due for some pretty decent rises. OK, if you're looking at the price action right now, we've been in a downtrend for a while. OK, we've been in a decent downtrend for a little while for uh, I would say um since basically the beginning of the month, okay? And, and, and we're getting some pretty significant volatility, uh, but the sentiment is, well, we're in a bull market now, so the price can shoot to the moon at any second, which is true. It could start at any second. Nobody knows. We could come in tomorrow and we could see a, a, a green candle all the way up here at 12,000 overnight like that, because that's exactly what happens. 
But once we start to see that, I'm about to seriously, um, I'm about to just ban uh, like globally everybody that even says Matic in chat, just so you guys know. Because I that kind of shit really pisses me off. Um, like if I, if I keep seeing it, I'm just going to automatically wipe everybody. Like I'm going to add it to the keywords in my channel and it will never be mentioned on my channel again. So if you're like being paid to promote it, uh, you're about to make sure that nobody ever sees the word in my channel for life. Um, yes, I can ban it. Um, and I'm about to. So um, anyway, um, Overall, when you look at the market, okay, when you're looking at Bitcoin and you're looking at what's expected of Bitcoin, people don't want to speculate on the altcoin market because they feel that Bitcoin is going to hit 20 grand. Like that is that one of the most um, guaranteed things, right? And so when there's that sentiment, people don't want to put money in the altcoin market because they know Bitcoin's expected to go to a certain point. And at that point, you know what, you're right. So let me let me go ahead and knock this out because I can't even continue with these spammers. Um, they drive me absolutely nuts. So give me just a second. Sorry, folks, that we have to do this, but assholes are um, trying to. Uh, let me see here. Where is it? Here we go. Uh, 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 um. Unfortunately, the spammers are going to get Matic banned from the channel for life. I don't like doing this, but people get out of hand. And I've noticed lately that there are a lot more bot spammers lately. Um, shoot, I got to remember how to do it. I don't think it's in... Ah, uh, I can't remember where to do it. I haven't, oh, maybe it's in here. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Ta -ta, ta -ta -ta -ta. Man, I've banned a lot of people from this channel. <laughs> Blocked words. Attic. All right. Uh, hopefully, it's retroactive and it's lo it's uh, live now. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Um, so, back to my point. Hopefully, this will eliminate all of the spam, spam. And this guy's name is even just nasty. Like, oh, I keep forgetting. I have to do it over here. Um, so, all right. So I'm, I think we're good. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So now here's, here's the, here's the thing. So I want you guys to take, I want you to like, seriously, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about everything going on in the cryptocurrency space today on a political level, on a national level, on an international level. Everybody is talking about cryptocurrencies right now. Institutions are entering the space. A lot of these groups are doing so over the counter, but they're getting ready. If you, if you close your eyes and you imagine just about every service, whether it's social media, when you get a home loan, when you buy a house, and the, the, you know all the, the title companies doing their title work on the blockchain, when you talk about, you know, different blockchains working together to accomplish similar goals, creating these in, insane data pipelines and, and, and decentralized databases of information, identification, you know, utilized, you know, I wish there'd be a way to, to, to start using um, the blockchain to identify people online. Um, I see that coming. Um, you know, you've got... You've got all of these different facets of, of economics, gaming, industry, you name it. 
supply chain data, like all these different elements. And when you start to picture all of these things being utilized on the blockchain, the majority of which are gonna be associated with an altcoin people, they're not gonna be associated with Bitcoin. There is always going to be altcoin speculation, period. There are, this is a new era of investment technology. This is a new era of finance. We are still in the beginning stages of something that is ultimately going to replace fiat currency. Bitcoin is going to be your dollar. Altcoins are going to be your quarter, nickel, dime, and penny. I mean, that's how this shit is going to work, folks. And a lot of this stuff is going to be, it's going to be based off of the sentiment of a lot of these altcoin projects. Who's doing what? Who's moving forward? Who's developing their 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 platform, who's, you know, that's what a lot of the stuff is gonna be based about, or based on. And so when I think about the altcoin market and I think about use case as, you know, initially the use case is, or the investment speculation is gonna be based on, um, it's gonna be based on speculation. Investments into the altcoin market are gonna be based off of who thinks what is going to hit first? Who thinks what is going to get higher than the rest quicker? That's what that's what the speculation is. And as we continue to move forward through the months and years, a lot of these projects are going to continue furthering themselves. They're gonna continue furthering their development, furthering their ease of use, furthering their mass adoption and the more people that get drawn in no longer just speculating on potential investment return on investment okay the more people are going to be utilizing these applications these dapps these apps these web-based platforms you name it the more that the public starts to come to the table with their clicks and 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 you know whatever it is that they're doing that is when you, you're describing Bitcoin. Yes, but Bitcoin is limited. Bitcoin can't do a lot of what these altcoins can. And so, you know, while you're gonna see some of these altcoin projects wither and go away because they were started and, and financed off of a white paper and nothing more, welcome kids. Um, you know, a lot of the money is going to go back. There, there's gonna be a lot of money going back into the altcoin market. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind. Altcoins are not going anywhere. Even the projects who have suffered, who have even the projects that have fallen 99% are still going to get a pump. They're still going to get um speculation. They're still going to be traded algorithmically. They're still you're still going to see a lot of these positions grow. It's just the nature of how things work when the time is right. I personally am of the belief that, you know, this whole bear market and to this day is a period of accumulation for all who believe in the space long term. You know, there are so many really good projects. And, you know, I talk about, um, welcome DeLuca, Photo DeLuca Photography, cool. Um, I talk a lot about Bitcoin and, and I used to talk a lot about altcoins. And, you know, for me to say that it's it's been uninspiring during this bear market for me to come on every day and discuss altcoin projects is an understatement, especially when I've been so busy establishing my own platform for the future, for my future, my family's future and those that I work with. So, you know, but I think I'm about to turn uh, change course a bit moving forward in this channel. And I think I'm going to legitimately start spending more time. I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to start zeroing in on these altcoins, and I'm going to start really. I've even started an Excel sheet where I'm establishing current business model metrics, current uh, foundational metrics on where these platforms are, where they are in development, what they've accomplished. I'm going to be going through, and I'll probably even if I do three a week. I want to be able to start really diving into the altcoin market and really figuring not even and I mean in, in even better detail than the the where are they now videos. I really want to know where the hell these projects are, not just based on 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 um uh, at face value. 
So, you know, moving forward on this channel, you guys can expect to start seeing a lot more stuff. I don't really give a shit about the news. Like, I really don't. I know that a lot of people have been building their channels over time, going over the news every day and sharing their opinions and all that. You guys know how I feel about that. A lot of this news is bought and paid for for the most part. Like, I'll guarantee you, when I start putting out press releases about Crow's Nest X, I'm willing to bet I don't even get that much coverage because what's going to happen is I'm going to get bombarded by news sites wanting Bitcoin to publish the article. Like, everything out there is paid for. If you're not paying for it, you're not getting your message out for the most part i could be surprised maybe things have changed in two years i don't know but i know that like new sites are are just i mean that they, they make they, <laughs> it's pay to play in, in 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 a lot of sense and so you know we'll we'll see we'll see but i i just i don't really pay much attention to the news i feel like all forms of media uh are there really to Tell us what to hear, what to see, and ultimately what to think. And and I just don't buy into a lot of the shit. You know, I need to dive in. I Look, I've contacted so many different CEOs on projects that I was really bullish on at one point. They don't even want to come onto my channel now. And I'm going to fucking out them all here soon. I'm tired of waiting. You got shit to say. You got something going on that's promising. And I'm not talking about GoChain. I'm not talking about GoChain. I know a lot of people, when GoChain news, when GoChain news, I see it everywhere I go because I had mentioned that they had some big things coming. When I know, you guys will be the first to know, obviously. Like, it, you won't have to ask me when go chain news. It's become such an annoyance. I'm never going to even talk about anything again until it's like 100% in my face and they're ready to come on live and talk about it because it's gotten so fucking annoying. Every time I turn around, it's when go chain news. It's like, give me a break. When go chain news is when go chain news. How about that? That's the best I got for you. I asked Jason, like, well, is there an update? He's like, we're still working. We're still working on it. When it's ready, it'll happen. It's like Blizzard and World of Warcraft updates. When it's ready, it'll happen. Um, you know, but moving forward, I am going to start focusing on, uh, I'm going to be outing some of these projects. You know, I've given, I've talked to uh, the people at Rewards Token. Hey, come on my channel. Let's talk about what you got going on. I mean, I used to charge money for people to come. I'm offering these guys opportunities to come on and, and brag about everything they've accomplished for free. They're evading me. The, the the CEO of Open Platform, you know, he tells me, we got this happening and that happened. I'm like, cool, let's, let's come on my channel. Let's talk about it live. Crickets. It's like everybody wants to talk about the good shit that they've got going on, but nobody wants to come out and put their face and name to it. And that bothers me. And so I'm going to start making a list and I'm checking it twice and I'm going to find out and tell y'all motherfuckers who's naughty or nice because I'm really getting frustrated with how these guys are handling this shit. Like I'm really getting frustrated with it. And it's like, now is the time to put up or shut up. If you've got something to say and you've got shit in the works and you're trying to make some waves in the space for the, 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 the better of the public, it's time to get out there and start talking about it. A lot of these people keep telling me the same shit. Oh, well, it's a bear market. We're speaking on deaf ears. I've got 251 of you guys live right now, and I'm sure by tomorrow afternoon, a couple thousand people will watch this video. That's not necessarily deaf ears. The numbers are growing and more people are starting to take notice. I've got Chainwise coming up in November, November 8th and 9th, for those of you that give a shit. $20 ticket. You can get a $90 red eye round trip from just about anywhere in the US. There's no excuse for everybody not to be there and participate. And yet a lot of these blockchain companies that we're talking to trying to get off their fat asses, you know, keep saying, oh, well, we're in a bear market and funds are tight. And, you know, where there's no point in us marketing to anybody because nobody's listening or paying attention. You know what? You don't know when the altcoin rally is going to truly begin. It could start tomorrow. And if you keep sitting around with your dick in your hand doing nothing, you're not going to get anywhere. And the guys that are out there hungry, pushing their message, pushing their project, keeping their developments moving forward, those are the ones that are going to beat you. And what pisses me off about that is I didn't invest in these new projects. I invested in the 
ones I believed in a year and a half to two years ago, and you motherfuckers are dropping the ball. It's time to get your shit together and start helping me help you so that we can start getting this message out to the people so that we can start educating people because there are a lot of really good apps and dApps and blockchains and new projects that are hitting the market all over the place and that you only have yourself to blame if you guys are not out there pushing that message to people. I'm giving more than anybody in terms of ample opportunity. I, I'm, I've got my channel. I've got a television show on na a national network with Biz TV. I've got a Chainwise convention that we're practically doing everything for free for the most part. It's not a cash grab. We're giving the tickets away for the for practically at twenty bucks. We're not charging a thousand dollars a ticket. We're not trying to rip everybody off. You know, we're not. Everything that I'm trying to do is to try and help this space grow. And yet, I still struggle with so many of these blockchain companies that have nothing but ex excuses. And if you're a blockchain company with nothing but excuses to move forward with, then I'm sorry I invested in you. I'm sorry I ever believed in you. And it's about time I start telling people what the fuck is really going on. Because I've had enough. It's, it's time to truly either shit or get out the pot. Now, the flip side of that is there are a lot of projects out there that I did invest in that I still believe in to this day. Very few have been dropping the ball, in my opinion. The majority have been doing a really good job. I see people trying to shit on Cardano. You have to be smoking crack, in my opinion, to try and take a shit on Cardano. One of the biggest, baddest, best projects filled by some of the greatest minds in science, technology, and development. And, and some people are like, Cardano's a shit coin. Cardano's never going to go anywhere. Obviously, you have no idea what you're talking about. Go back to investing in your fucking pyramid scheme, waiting for your big, shiny return that's never going to come. Those are the people that I see running around talking shit about other projects because they've already invested into some new, crappy, shitty pyramid scheme, and they want everybody to buy into it. That's one of the reasons why we get so much spam and all these different YouTube video chats all the time. These guys are trying to pump their own bullshit because they realize, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I'm a moron. Oh, somebody that I don't know told me to go invest in this thing that's going to guarantee me returns and then I'm going to dump all my money into it and then if that doesn't work out I'm going to go to the next one and the next one because I'm an idiot and I'm absolutely insane and I'm expecting something different to happen from the exact same occurrence each and every time it's just like I, I'm at a point now where it's Monday and I'm already, I'm, I'm so tired of reading the same shit in the news day in and day out. I'm so tired of reading all of this bullshit about China and these trade tariffs and, and all this other stuff and how it's going to affect our economy or we're going into a recession and the stock market's going to crash to nothing. It's all the same shit I see all the time, but what actually changes? What actually changes? The reality to me is, is that if all of this stuff is true and all of these things are happening, it is just a matter of time until the, the, the world on an international level gets wise and truly adopts cryptocurrencies for what they are. And what they are is a message. What they are is a tool. It is a new way. It is a replacement to the shitty, corrupted, fucked up system that we have all been living off of for a century. And, and it's going to change everything as we know it. And that's what I believe. And I, and I say, bring it. They talk about, we got to bail out the banks. What are you going to bail out the banks for? If they fucked up, let them fail. They don't need to be here because all they're going to do is take that money, give themselves a bunch of bonuses, and continuing on with the same shitty business practices they've been doing this entire time that got them into this hole to begin with. And then they want the public to bail them out. We shouldn't allow any of that to happen. That should not even be a possibility. And that is the kind of shit that cryptocurrency is going to deny. You will have to be accountable for yourself in crypto. Whether you're an investor or you're on the other side of the fence, you're going to have to be accountable for what you do and how you treat your customers and how you, everything that you do on the blockchain, it doesn't go away. It always stays. It's immutable. You can't change it. There's nothing you can do. And if you don't have proper business practice, proper ethics in business, you should fail. It shouldn't be up to the public to bail out all of these greedy corporate regimes, these banking cartels, and all these fucks that are treating us all like lemmings. And it drives me insane to the core of me when I see this opportunity being squandered by so many because they're listening to just a few fucking morons on the internet who truly have their own best interests in mind. 
Some of these altcoin projects will fail. Many of these altcoin projects may likely fail. But it's not just about that. It's about staying true to the mission. And I am. That's all I can say. I am. For everyone out there, look, I came on here with no mission at all. I, I, I just wanted to talk. I didn't realize I was going to get like hot headed about anything. It's just, it's, it's, there's so many reasons why I don't do a lot of videos, man, because it's like I post stuff on social media. I do different things. You know, I post stuff on in my Instagram. I try everything to give people opportunity. I try everything to educate people on the space and, and what to expect and what's happening. And I just dish it out as real as I can. No bullshit here. I am not about bullshit, people. I never have been, I never will be. And I see so many other people out there and it's like when you know, when you know what other YouTubers are up to behind the scenes, when you know what they really want, why they're really here, what their true motives are, there are so many more self-serving YouTubers out there than you think. And that pisses me off too. But I'm not here to start wars or or any of that shit. I just it's like look, I'm self-serving to a degree. I mean, I'm starting I've started multiple companies in this bear market. To me that's a little self-serving, you know, but at the same time, while I'm serving myself and my family, my goal is to serve everyone involved. You know, and I'm definitely not going to sit around, uh I just I just need to just calm down. I don't know how else to explain the future and what I see. I, I, I truly believe cryptocurrency is going to take over fiat on an international level. And the time is now to get yourself established. And if you're not, and if you're not learning, you know, and, and, and you know, here's one of the things that bothers me too. It's because you know, there are a lot of you guys in my live chat right now, and I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys actually care. You guys really at least care about finding out what people think about the market and, and what, what we think, and, and, and it's good on you. What I think bothers me are the number of people that I try to talk to who have no idea about crypto, and I try to explain to them what's happened, what's happening, and what I see happening in the future. And I tell them, like, you could, you could get into the market with 10 bucks and just take that 10 bucks and put it into something that you find to be fruitful, something that you feel is worth it. You know, it, it, it's like, to me at this point, it's not just about return on investment. I mean, obviously it is, but it's, it, to me, it's about be, being a part of something from the beginning. You know what I mean? To me, it's about being a part of the this growing number of pioneers in a space that is still relatively untested and unproven. It's an ideal. It's a it's a a goal, a mission, a valiant effort to fight the powers that have controlled so many for so long. I want to see cryptocurrencies take over the Fed. I want to see them. I want to see the Fed's asses get kicked. I want to see these people who have not been serving the better good of the public be gone. I, you know, and, I, and I've made jokes and I've talked about like New World Order and things like that and how that could potentially be a good thing if it were done properly, if it were done with the true interest of the people at heart. I'm not saying that that would ever happen because the fact of the matter is that the people in power, they'll fight tooth and nail and do anything they can to stay there. But it's like, at what point does, does somebody's perspective change from being about greed and about changing the world in a positive way? When does the bullshit stop? Can the public actually handle the truth as it is? Can the public respect the truth as it is? Does everything have to be cloak and dagger and, and, and bound in shadows? You know, what can the public truly handle? What does the public want to know? What's the public's interest? 
you know, and when I look and I talk to people day to day and I try to educate them and I try to bring them, at least open their eyes to what's going on in the cryptocurrency space, so many people just say, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's too technical. It's too complicated for me. But that's why the people that are in this channel and the people that are out on YouTube watching cryptocurrency related content, trying to learn every perspective, trying to learn as much as they can about the space. That's why a lot of you guys are gonna be taking over. The world is ours. We're planning our stake now. We are the pioneers of cryptocurrency. I'll see you guys again soon. I'm gonna go take a break. Thanks for joining me, Grow Your Coins.